So now we can get a response back from our skull when we examine it. We're going to continue by adding our next systems, which are going to be our inventory and also our take action. So we've already created a list for the nouns of our items in a given room in interactable items. So we're going to use that for take. So before we create the function for take, we know that it's also going to need a dictionary in interactable items, just like examine did. So we're going to add that first. So let's go over to interactable items, and we can actually just copy the examine dictionary and paste it and just change its name because it's going to be almost exactly the same. Then we need to unpack any items we can take into the take dictionary when we unpack the room, just like we did for examine. So let's go back to the game controller and we can actually just also copy this one if statement. So if interaction dot input action dot keyword equals examine down to the braces. And we're just gonna switch this to take. And instead of the examine dictionary, we're gonna put things into the take dictionary, right? So using the same structure that we did for examine for take, because take is gonna give a text response as well. It's gonna say, you took the skull, but it's also gonna do some other stuff. So we're gonna do that now. So now we can set up our dictionaries for take, right? Using the same approach we use for examine, but we also are gonna to need to call a function for take in interactable items. This is gonna follow a similar pattern to examine, but with slightly more complex behavior since it needs to add an item to the inventory. So let's go back to interactable items and we're going to, let's put this below clear collections. Scroll down. This is going to be a public function that returns a dictionary of strings called take. And it's gonna take in a string array called separated input words. In this function, we're gonna have a string called noun, which is gonna be equal to separated input words one. Then we wanna check if the noun is in the room so we can take it. If it is, we'll add it to the list of nouns in the inventory and remove it from the list of nouns in the room. Then we wanna return the take dictionary to the calling function, which is going to be our take input action. It's gonna be in our take input action, which we're gonna write in a second. So we're gonna write the function first and then we're gonna write the thing that calls it. So the dictionary that we're gonna return is gonna be returned to the input action so that it can act on it so that it can display stuff from it. So we are going to say if, let's make a space, if nouns in room dot contains noun, because we can only take things that are in the room, right? Then we're going to say nouns in inventory dot add noun, nouns in room dot remove noun, and return take dictionary. So success, right? We took an item, we added it to our inventory, we removed it from the list in the room. Now, if there was no noun in the room, then we're gonna return null, and we're gonna use that to log a failure message. But importantly, in order for interactable items to log things back to the controller, we need to add a variable so that this script can talk back to the controller. So. Let's add that. This is going to be a private game controller called controller. And we're gonna add an awake function and get a component reference to the game controller, right? Remember the interactable item is attached to the same game object, so we just use get component to access the controller. So here, if we did not have success, we're gonna add an else, and we're gonna call controller.logstring with return, which is our function to add a string to our action log, right, and show it in our game. There is no space plus noun plus quote space here to take period. So it's not in the nouns in room 
list, so it's not in the room. You can't take it. So we return our error message, and we're also going to return null as the return value, right? So we can check if the dictionary is null and then do things in the calling function. So now that we have a function to call, we can actually set up our input action. So we're going to create a new script for take. Let me just control shift s to save all my scripts. Return to Unity. Select scripts, create, C sharp script. This one is going to be called take. And let's open it up. So same pattern here, right? This is going to inherit from input action. It's going to get the create asset menu attribute. The menu name is going to equal text adventure input actions take. Delete start and update because this is a scriptable object, right? It's not going to respond to those callbacks. And now we can override respond to input from our base class input action. And what we're going to do when take responds to input is we are going to declare a dictionary of strings called take dictionary. And that's going to be equal to controller interactable items dot take and we're going to pass through our input our array of strings separated input words right so we're going to try to take something and if we're successful we're going to get back a dictionary so if take dictionary does not equal null meaning success we were able to take the thing we got back our dictionary then controller dot log string with return controller dot test verb dictionary with noun, take dictionary, separated input words zero, and separated input words one. So similar to what we did with examine, we are going to get a text response back if we're successful. And so we're going to check the dictionary that we created to see if we can take the thing. Now we also need to clean up the take dictionary the same way we did the examine dictionary in interactable items. So let's save this script, return to interactable items, and in clear collections, we'll just add take dictionary dot clear and save that as well. Control Shift S to save everything. Remember, this is already getting called from game controller, so we don't need to worry about calling it. And now let's return to Unity to set this up. So we are going to create in the input actions folder a new input action called take. And its keyword is going to be take. We're going to add it to the game controller as one of our possible actions. And we're going to add it to the skull as well. So the interactions are now going to become two on the skull, and we're going to drag in take as the input action, and the text response is going to be you take the skull. Cool. So the skull's already in the room, so now we should be able to test. So we're in the room with the skull. We're going to take skull. You take the skull. Cool. And so now we can examine or take objects. The next step is going to be to display any objects that we have in our inventory using the inventory input action that we're going to create in the next section.